Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I hope people are still awake. Uh, we'll try to. <laughs> I'll, I'll show some uh, fun pictures from the operating room. I hope it's uh, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna keep everybody uh, everybody going. So uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for the privilege of the podium. Um, thanks, uh, Dr. Harris, for for invitation. Um, uh, my name is Carol Moody. I'm one of the heart surgeons from Minneapolis Heart Institute at uh, Abbott Northwestern Hospital. Um, and I will talk about uh, cardiothoracic perspective on uh, aortic disease. Uh, in my clinical practice, uh, my focus is uh, aortic surgery, uh, mechanical circulatory support, and cardiac uh, transplantation. Uh, I have no uh, conflict of interest uh, relevant to this uh, talk other than the fact that I really love what I do. So uh, pardon my enthusiasm. So there's a few topics uh, that I would like to talk about. Um, first, uh, what is the uh, common operation that uh, a ca cardiac surgeon uh, performs in everyday practice? So bread and butter, aortic surgery, uh, the ones that are performed with uh, low perioperative risk, risk about one to 2%. Uh, we're gonna dive a little deeper later, and we're gonna talk about complex aortic surgeries, the ones that actually can still be performed with low perioperative risk at experience centers. Uh, we'll talk about emergencies, which in our case is mostly uh, type A aortic dissection, and those are the cases that carry much higher perioperative risk, up to 20%. And uh, I will uh, tell you what I, uh, why I believe that uh, our program and uh, what we do and what we see in cardiac and vascular surgery is fairly unique. So I'm going to start from the end. So why do I think it's unique? Well, obviously it's unique because it's done by cardiac surgeons, so that's very unique. I'm, I'm, I'm obviously kidding. So uh, the reason why I, uh, the, the uh, operations that we, we have to address on a daily uh, basis when we do uh, cardiac surgery are unique because the portion of the aorta that we address, which is ascending aorta, aortic root, the one that is attached to the heart and aortic arch, the one that uh, sends off the vessels to the brain, is in a very critical portion of the cardiovascular system. So um, even though aorta is a tube with multiple smaller tubes coming off of that, we cannot just separate clamp uh, the portion that we want to repair or replace uh, uh, and uh, stop the blood flow through a brain, through the heart, through the lungs, because obviously that would not be uh, consistent with survival. So um, uh, this, is a, uh, this is a very, this is a very uh, unique uh, situation that we have to face. Uh, we need to protect uh, all those uh, vessels going to the brain. We need to protect the uh, heart that uh, both of those organs are extremely sensitive to uh, interruption in the blood flow. So how do we do it? We obviously are not miracle makers, but we have, uh, we have tools that uh, allow us to uh, work on those, uh, uh, on those uh, uh, organs and on, on aorta in this, uh, in this area. This is probably what many people already know. This is a cardiopulmonary bypass, a so-called heart-lung machine. It's a, a pretty a sizable device, very complex nowadays, very uh, well-developed uh, uh, this day and age. Uh, it's run by uh, perfusionists, with, which are people trained, uh, to, uh, the, trained in uh, human physiology, anatomy, pharmacotherapy, and they help us together with uh, uh, cardioanesthesia and uh, other, uh, uh, other uh, members of the team uh, to take care of the patient while those uh, uh, parts of the uh, cardiovascular system can be addressed uh, and repaired. Because of this device, we can uh, do a lot of uh, uh, manipulation with human body. We can uh, uh, put patient under uh, hypothermia, so cool the, uh, cool the temp body temperature uh, uh, low to different levels. We can go to mild, moderate, deep, in even profound hypothermia, which is below 16 degrees of Celsius, which is really, really cold, as you can imagine. We can arrest the heart. Heart stops. Stop. Uh, it's, uh, it is arrested with what is called uh, cardioplegic solution. Uh, when it stops beating, it also stops using uh, oxygen, so the metabolism is really low. And we can also create a kind of separate circuits or separate heart-lung machine for a brain, because brain is the most sensitive to ischemia, as you know. Um, it, uh, it can last only about five minutes at a normal temperature. When we cool um, to lower temperatures, it can last much longer. Plus, on top of that, we can actually create a situation where we have a separate bra a brain uh, perfusion during the uh, operation. Why I believe that uh, our program is in a way unique uh, is the fact that we truly work uh, with each other, and Dr. Harris already alluded uh, to it. Uh, this is one of the cases we've done together with Dr. Sun. You can see uh, uh, him and me uh, first line. There's Dr. Titus and Dr. Uh, uh, Tang that uh, work with us, vascular surgeons. There is one of our PAs in the back, and we operate uh, uh, together on one of the uh, complex aortic cases. 
combining, an, uh, combining our efforts and uh, um, um, delivering as good of a care of the patient as uh, possible. And really, the uniqueness, I, I truly believe that uh, um, you know, in 2020, uh, complex aortic surgery can only be done in collaborative fashion because it's very, um, it's very advanced, it's very difficult, and it doesn't matter whether you're a cardiac surgeon, whether you're a vascular surgeon, whether you're running outpatient clinic, uh, a cardi uh, uh, imaging cardiologist or any of those mentioned here, but really the focus is the patient. And this is, this is how, how we try to structure our program. Um, it, it is not uncommon to have uh, post-operative uh, visit uh, uh, with the patient uh, done uh, simultaneously by both cardiac and vascular surgeon. Um, uh, also, a lot of uh, follow-up visits are scheduled, uh, uh, the, the uh, follow-up studies are scheduled the same day. So people that come from different uh, areas that uh, so sometimes remote uh, uh, places don't have to, uh, don't have to travel uh, multiple times to, uh, to the cities. So now I'll talk about uh, what we do in daily practice. So this is one of the most common aortic cases that we perform, which is aortic, uh, ascending aortic aneurysm. So ascending aorta, as already mentioned, this is the portion between the aortic root, which is connected to the heart, and the aortic arch that sends off the uh, uh, vessels to the, uh, to the brain. Uh, this is aortic, ascending aortic aneurysm. So it's dilated. Um, uh, it uh, it, car uh, it um, creates a situation, um, a potential risk for uh, for aortic dissection, and this is how we repair it. Uh, so a patient goes on a heart-lung machine, and uh, aorta is clamped, the uh, heart is arrested, and then we saw a dacron tube uh, at the beginning, at the end of this, uh, uh, of this uh, portion of the aorta. So relatively simple operation, uh, and uh, uh, should be done with uh, low perioperative uh, uh, risk for mortality and morbidity. That's what it looks like in the, uh, in the operating room. Um, this is a patient's head on, uh, on the bottom on this side. This is patient's abdomen. And you can see this huge aneurysm is uh, expanded and uh, pushing kind of other structures away. This was uh, over six centimeter aneurysm. And after removing it and replacing, you see now there's much more room. The heart actually can uh, come to the, uh, to the field more and the whole ascending aorta up to the arch is replaced with the uh, dacron tube. Uh, those uh, aneurysms are very often asymptomatic, as Dr. Harris already mentioned, because they usually don't um, uh, create any uh, compressive, uh, n any compression um, uh, uh, situation. Uh, we perform basically prophylactic surgery, so uh, we try to prevent the dissection, and we operate when we believe that our perioperative risk is lower than the risk of dissection. So we really have to be, we, have to, we need to have an expertise to uh, perform those uh, operations with a risk at one to 2%. Um, in general, the recommendation is about five to five and a half. Dr. Harris already talked about it. And we also, uh, uh, we look at our, um, the sizes of the, of our, uh, the size of aortas of our patients uh, that, are, that are indexed to the body. And this is, um, we, you already saw that slide, we, be, we believe this um, uh, index over 10 centimeters square over uh, uh, per one meter of the patient's height can be indicative of increased higher, uh, increased risk for uh, aortic events. Um, it is not an absolute, but it's one of the tools that guides us, um, uh, that guides us uh, to, uh, in terms of recommending the, uh, the operation. Another quite common, uh, common uh, uh, problem that we see is aortic root aneurysm with normal aortic valve. So aortic root is the portion of the aorta that is connected to the heart, uh, gives off two coronary vessels that supply heart muscle with blood, and has, uh, th this is the area where the aortic valve lives and uh, it's uh, attached to the ascending aorta. So very short, but deep in the heart, really not visible uh, after opening the chest, only after opening the heart and dissecting uh, the heart. Um, again, this is very often asymptomatic, um, uh, asymptomatic situation where patient has normal aortic valve, uh, there's no compressive symptoms, and uh, in terms of the indications for surgery, pretty much the same as uh, ascending aortic uh, aneurysm. However, the problem with fixing it is much more complex than just ascending aorta, because as you can imagine, this is not just a tube. This is a structure that has aortic valve. In this case, we're discussing uh, a normal valve, has those coronary vessels that are absolutely vital for the heart to survive because heart ne ne requires blood flow. But so we have to do something to fix this area without damaging uh, the other structures. And we, uh, our goal is to fix it, fix it in a way that we preserve the aortic valve that now is inside the new root that we create. Uh, ascending aorta is also replaced and we need to reconnect the coronary vessels. 
So this is what we do. We basically disassemble the aorta, aortic root, in, uh, into few pieces. We have this functional normal aortic valve. We have disconnected coronary vessels and disconnected ascending aorta. Then we dive deep into the heart under the aortic valve. We put those sutures under the aortic valve. This is really deep inside the heart. And then we land the graft over the aortic valve. Uh, this is called valve sparing root replacement or David 5 operation. It's this, uh, invented by Dr. Tyrone David from Canada. Uh, so imagine that you have a, your favorite uh, living room on the second floor of your house. It's fully furnished. Uh, there, the, uh, there is uh, dinner served at the table and there are guests and there is a construction around it. So basically that's what you try to do. You try to build the house around this living room uh, without damaging, uh, uh, damaging uh, the, uh, the table and not affecting the party. And this is all about uh, keeping this uh, aortic valve functional and uh, uh, functional for a long time because uh, this is the, the, that's what really gives uh, the patient survival uh, benefit and lower morbidity long term. Then this valve gets rain planted, suture in multiple spots, coronary vessels got reconnected, and this is the final result for valve sparing root replacement operation. Uh, another, uh, another iteration of the problem with aortic root is the aortic root aneurysm with abnormal valve, where the valve is not functional, is either stenotic or leaky, as uh, we know we, those, uh, uh, those, valve, uh, the, those, problem exist, those problems exist uh, 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 around us, and uh, this valve has to, uh, also has to be replaced. Those patients uh, commonly are more often uh, symptomatic because of the valve disease itself, and the indication to treat it is either prophylactic surgery uh, for the size of the aneurysm, five or five and a half, or to treat aortic uh, valve disease. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, specific aneurysm is treated with what we call bental operation. So instead of um, preserving the aortic valve, we're going to remove it and use composite valve graft, either with mechanical valve or tissue valve. And we will put it into the aortic root position with reimplantation of the coronary vessels connected to the heart, connected to the distal ascending aorta. And this is a new uh, prosthetic root, either mechanical or tissue, and it's going to function as a part of the heart and proximal aorta. Does anybody know who it is? It's Willie Sutton. Do you know who Willie Sutton is? Two million dollars, yeah? And he was. Apparently, he didn't say that, but he was asked why does he rob the banks, because that's where the money is, right? So <laughs> this, is, this is really where the money is. This is uh, uh, what uh, Dr. Harris already uh, uh, talked about a lot. This is type aortic dissection. Uh, if, um, uh, if we can handle, if we can create a system, if we can create a strategy for taking care of the patients with low mor mortality and uh, morbidity, to treat uh, this surgical emergency type aortic dissection. This is an ultimate test for the program whether we are a, a, a viable and a high quality uh, aortic center. Uh, um, aortic dissection, as we know, it's a basically split in the inner lining of the aorta where the blood starts traveling between the layers of the aorta, starts distending the aorta and uh, it puts it at risk of rupturing at what we call malperfusion. So it goes to different parts of the body, usually starts at the very beginning of the aorta, which is aortic root, and goes all the way to the legs. And then every vessel that comes of aorta on a way there can be compressed by this, by this flap and create malperfusion. Uh, if that doesn't happen, which happens about 10% of cases, then uh, uh, every uh, every hour we have about 1% to 2% risk that the aorta will rupture in different portions of our body. That's why it is a surgical emergency. Um, uh, aortic dissection looks like this in the operating room, so there's, uh, the aorta is bruised up, the blood travels between the layers, it's thinned out and ready to rupture. If we put intraaortic, uh, uh, I'm sorry, um, intravascular ultrasound, we will see the flap and true and false lumen, so double barrel structure because of this uh, dissection. Um, the type of operation we used to do was ascending aortic replacement. We believed that uh, uh, by replacing the ascending aorta and addressing this what we called primary flap uh, for type A dissection would fix everything because the blood would get redirected into the true lumen and this false lumen would just uh, thrombose and stop existing. Unfortunately, um, uh, it is not true because uh, follow-up studies showed that the false lumen patency, this false channel uh, stay, stays uh, patent for a very long time and then dilates and is uh, uh, prone for 
aneurysmal degeneration and rupture. Uh, and up to 20 to 30 percent of patients uh, require reinterventions uh, down the road. So that's why we, um, at this point, uh, are looking for a better solution to prevent this late degeneration uh, of the aorta and uh, sequela of the type aortic dissection. And this is what we do at our institution. This is called total arch replacement with trifurcated graft and frozen elephant track of fat. So just to quickly describe it, uh, in type A dissection, we address the root, with the, we either repair it or replace it, depending on what we find there. We replace the ascending aorta. Those are the head vessels that get disconnected and connect to a different graft. And then we deploy the nitinol covered stent to re-expand true lumen and this whole ascending and this whole thoracic aorta basically gets fixed at one, uh, in one setting. We do it because we wanna, uh, we wanna uh, promote thrombosis of the false lumen and uh, promote the healing of the rest of the aorta. Dr. Uh, Harris already mentioned, but that, uh, that's what it looks like at, uh, at uh, MHI. So when we get a call that type A aortic dissection patient is coming to emergency room, we go there, everybody uh, that is involved in the treatment, we examine the patient, we review the images and formulate preliminary uh, plan for the, uh, for the surgery extent. We extent of surgery, we look what's the patient's uh, uh, risk uh, for complications. We go to hybrid room, which is the room where we can basically do any, everything uh, we, potentially can, uh, we potentially may need with the complex aortic uh, problem. Uh, we plan for cardiopulmonary bypass, for cannulation, hypothermia, cerebral spinal protection, and discuss all the details of operation. This is not our hybrid room, but that's basically what it looks like. As you can see, there are imaging uh, uh, capabilities. The room is big. There's multiple teams that can work uh, simultaneously to deliver uh, the best uh, care to the patient. We start from the connecting the patient to car cardiopulmonary bypass via axillary cannulation, which is the artery under the collarbone. It helps us then perfuse the brain during the time of circulatory arrest. We looked with the intravascular ultrasound at the flap and the branches of the aorta. Uh, we plan for the cerebral perfusion. Usually it's about one liter of blood, cold blood flowing through the brain through a separate circuit. And we're monitoring uh, cerebral uh, oxygenation throughout the case, so we know whether we're doing a good job with uh, this uh, uh, strategy. Uh, how do we separate brain from the rest of the body? So this is the neck, this is the head. Uh, we cannulate here, this is under the collarbone, axillary artery, uh, separate the arch vessels, and we have basically blood going only through the upper body uh, of the patient, and as well, while we work on the aortic root, ascending aorta arch, and descending aorta. This is what it looks like in the operating field. Uh, the arch gets disassembled. Uh, we clamp those vessels that, that go to the head. Brain gets perfused. We connect this trifurcated graft to the head vessels and clamp it here and then deliver antegrade night and all covered stent into the aortic arch and descending aorta to create frozen elephant trunk and then put things uh, together. Again, because we want to promote thrombosis of the false lumen and Re remodeling and healing of the aorta. Um, one example of the, uh, of the typical uh, type aortic uh, case that we had uh, at our institution, 43-year-old patient, uh, turns out with Marfan uh, disease in the past and uh, repaired pectus excavatum, uh, presented with type A dissection with severe leak through the aortic valve. It, turns out, it turned out on the echo his heart was very deconditioned at 20 to 25 percent ejection fraction, which means extremely weak. Probably he had chronic uh, the problem that he did that was under recognized and the CT of the chest abdomen pelvis showed type, a, showed type A dissection. He was basically in extremis. He was on multiple pressors. Uh, he was making lactate, which means that his body was not properly perfused and he was not getting enough oxygen to the body. He was in liver failure and renal failure. So really sick, uh, sick patient. CAT scan showed uh, dissection flap. Those are the head vessels. So the dissection extends everywhere to the head, goes through the arch, and this is his ascending aorta with the flap and aortic root that is hugely dilated, typical for Marfan patient. As you can see, there's pectus excavatum, so divot in the, um, uh, in the chest of the patient. He went to the OR. We did what we do the best. So we did this operation. We replaced the root, ascending aorta, the trifurcated graft. So exactly what why I showed you on, uh, on the picture. Uh, unfortunately, because he came to us with a very weak heart, we were not able to finish the case and disconnect him from, from the heart-lung machine because the heart was just too weak as a pump. 
and after the operation was not ready to, uh, to take over uh, the circulation. So we left him on what we call ECMO, which is the extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, this acronym here. Uh, this is basically simplified heart-lung machine that can be portable, it's external, it's connected to the patient via great vessels or centrally through the heart, and allows the time for the patient's heart and lungs to recover and take over uh, f uh, following the surgery after usually a few days. At the same time, because we have a, a program with mechanical circulatory support, so artificial pumps and artificial hearts and transplantation, we evaluated him whether he would need something like that in case the heart wouldn't recover since he was a viable young gentleman. This is the operation that we did uh, on, this, uh, on this gentleman. So this, was, this is his, uh, his aortic root that is replaced, ascending aorta going to the arch, the trifurcated graft going to the head vessels, and then it's connected all together and uh, uh, sewn together uh, with the heart. It's a very long operation usually. As you can see, heart was stopped for about four hours. He was uh, arrested at uh, um, uh, 18 degrees of Celsius, so deep hypothermic uh, cases to uh, have all of it fixed. Uh, he recovered very nicely. His heart recovered after three days. We were able to, um, uh, to win ECMO and disconnect ECMO from his body. And uh, his echo recovered to his baseline, which was 20 to 25%. And the CT scan showed um, uh, that there was no residual false lumen, which that's exactly what we want. As you can see, there is only contrast in the uh, components of the repair that we did. And this is his aortic root, ascending aorta, trifurcated graft. And uh, that's the 3D reconstruction uh, of the aorta after our operation. That's what majority of our patients end up with. And two weeks later, he was rehabilitating well with good liver and kidney function. And six months later, he returned. He lives in Chicago. He returned for a follow-up. And actually, his heart completely recovered. His EF is now 55, 60%. That's our scars. This is the scar from his childhood after the pectus excavatum was uh, repaired. Uh, we have patients that come to us, uh, unfortunately, a few days or weeks after type A dissection. They do survive the initial insult uh, and then come to us in subacute phase and usually we deal at this point with situation where sometimes the whole aorta in the chest has to be replaced and then we do a different type of incision we need to open the chest from the left to the right side and uh, operate basically on the whole aorta in the chest as you can see this is the heart those are the lungs retractor and the whole chest is open uh, and we replace aorta starting at the very bottom which is the aortic root here then arch head vessels, descending aorta, and the whole aorta all the way to the diaphragm gets replaced. This is the case actually we did with Dr. Manunga together. Uh, and uh, it heals quite well. Uh, believe it or not, those patients do uh, fairly well from uh, a pain perspective and a rehabilitation perspective. Those are the two different uh, examples of uh, uh, incision that is called clamshell incision because after division, the chest opens like a clam. Um, unfortunately, I don't have time to, uh, to, talk, uh, to uh, talk to you about all the, all the cases that I would like to. Uh, there are cases uh, of patients that came to us with uh, uh, ruptured aortas in the chest and uh, from the infectious process. And be even before opening their chest, we needed to access different type of ves uh, different uh, areas of vessels in the groin, in the chest, access the tip of the heart, uh, get ready for opening the chest. And before we did it, Patients already, uh, patient already needed to be cooled down and the whole uh, blood needed to be drained from the body because without it, if we open, patient would exsanguinate. Uh, and this operation um, uh, needed to be done in complete arrest, uh, circulatory arrest before opening the chest. Um, uh, we, sometimes we need to be very inventive. We need to connect things in a very different way than they're, uh, that uh, uh, they're, they're, they were made for. Um, uh, sometimes we have to repeat the surgery a year later because the infection returns and uh, the same operation basically was redone a year later with an additional cut to peel off this graft of the sternum because it was stuck here and uh, believe it or not uh, uh, after using a cryopreserved homograft so everything biological tissue to avoid uh, reinfection this patient did uh, quite well and is at home now. So in summary, uh, elective aortic surgery uh, is safe and should be done uh, at, uh, uh, with low perioperative risk. Uh, emergencies carry much higher risk and we, uh, do, we should do everything to, uh, to prevent them. Uh, aortic disease is definitely an undertreated problem. 
aortic root and ascending aorta as well as aortic arch are very unique because of the location and uh, the need for use of cardiopulmonary bypass. And we truly believe that interdisciplinary approach can improve uh, the uh, patient's uh, results. Thank you very much and we'll answer questions at the end.